Hello and welcome to Rick's RC Flying Channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at installing Robart pin hinges and then attaching the flight controls to the sweet and low bill. So let's get started. I'm just going to demonstrate the installation of the hinges onto the flight controls of the sweep and low build. Now, this happens to be one side of the elevator and this is the other side. Now, the sweep and low has just your typical conventional flight controls, so the Robart pin style hinge is well suited. Now, they come in different sizes. This one happens to be 3 16th of an inch. You can get them 1 8th and you can even get a heavier one. And um, I've been using Robart hinges for many, many years. I've never had one fail on me or start binding. They're very well made. They do have a steel pin that runs through there. There's the head and that's the tail of the pin. And uh, relatively easy to install. Now they're going to be epoxied into the flight control. I'll be using 30 minute epoxy. And um, as a precaution uh, to avoid gluing the hinge solid with epoxy so that it can't move, you can apply a little bit of Vaseline onto the actual joint. And uh, because it's, you gotta be really careful if you put too much epoxy in the hole, it's uh, you know not unusual as you install the hinge, some epoxy comes out and uh, if it gets into the hinge area, it could create a problem. And uh, you know, it would either start binding on you or you may even glue it solid. And uh, so the Vaseline is, uh, helps prevent that. Okay, so now there's different ways of doing everything in the modeling world. Uh, these hinges can be installed uh, onto the flight control and at the same time installed on the airplane. So in other words, they would be epoxied into the flight control And then you would have put epoxy here as well, and you can put some epoxy into the horizontal stab, into the hole, and then install this onto the airplane. So the entire process happens basically all at once. And uh, typically then the flight control is secured with masking tape so, uh, uh, so it stays secure during the uh, curing process of the epoxy. However, uh, I'm gonna be doing it a little bit different. Uh, quite often, uh, this way I do it, is I'm going to install the hinges, let the epoxy cure on this flight control, and then later on, I'll install it onto the airplane. Now, when it comes to actually installing the hinges, there's a few things you just have to be a bit careful about. Is First of all, do check that all your uh, holes are you know, properly cleaned out and ready to accept the hinge. Because I did fiberglass these in epoxy resin and some did uh, run into the holes. So of course what I did was uh, I took a file and I made sure that you know they were cleaned out and that they easily uh, and appropriately the right size to accept the hinge. There's no play in it, it's a really nice snug fit. And uh, you wanna make sure you, you pre-fit everything so once the epoxy is mixed, although it is 30 minute epoxy, but you want the whole process to go smoothly. You don't want to find out, like my airlines have five hinges and you get to the fifth one and it doesn't fit properly, okay? So, you know, make sure you're, you're ready for the project. And uh, when you install these, um, as you put them in there, you have to orientate the hinge accordingly. In other words, these hinges only move in one direction like this, it can't move this way, right? Obviously, so they just move in this position. So when you put them in there, be careful that, because you know, you can turn these, and when you put them in there, not that it moves in this position and not in the proper one, all right? Because if you accidentally did this and you happen to install it on the airplane, uh, you would have quite a problem. So you gotta make sure that when you put the hinge in, that it's orientated properly for the direction that the flight control will move. The other thing is you make sure that all the hinges are positioned in the hole at the same point. 
So what, wherever the fulcrum point here is that you're going to use, do it consistently. So in other words, you don't want to put one in all the way in like that. And then the other one is further out because that hinge line has got to be the same. Otherwise, you're going to run into problems. Okay, so that's an important one. A minor one, which is just a personal idiosyncrasy, I orientate the head of all the hinges in the same direction. And what I typically do, this is the outer part, I orientate the head of the hinge uh, basically outboard. So they're all facing the same way. It's really a mute point, but it's, it's just the way I am, I guess. So anyways, they're gonna be installed like that. Now, when you put them in there, you know, I'm going like this and say, oh, well, they're all moving in the right direction. But look what happens when you look at it this way. They're at an angle. So even though when you go like this and say, yep, that's good, put the flight control in this position and move the hinges 90 degrees and now make sure that they're exactly perpendicular to the flight control. See this one here? So we're going to position it like that. All right. So now when later on, when we go to install these, uh, you're going to get a really uh, good action because if they're off, it's going to create sort of a binding feeling. And that, that's definitely something you want to avoid. Okay. So I'm going to mix some 30 minute epoxy and we're going to install these. All right. So I've mixed some 30 minute epoxy. And I'm just going to put it in here. Now, there are different kinds of epoxy you can use. I use uh, sometimes high saw on uh, bigger airplanes or in particularly uh, faster airplanes. Something like a jet, for example, I would use uh, high saw epoxy. This particular brand of epoxy is the BSI, Bob Smith version, and the 30 minute is quite uh, more than adequate. Okay, so we put that in there like that. Then what I do is um, I take a little bit of alcohol and I'm gonna clean this particular bay out. And what I actually end up doing too is coating that indentation with epoxy, just the way it works out. So now we're going to install, and that's the outboard portion. So that's where I'm going to have the head. So that's the head. I'm positioning that in there. And they're going exactly all in the same, same spot. And turn it like this. Now you see that angle there, right? That's very important. We're going to... Turn that properly. There we go. All right, so we're gonna let that basically cure. And once that's cured, like this side is already done, these are in here, they're not gonna pull these out. So this one is now ready, uh, coating this with epoxy and putting some in the actual hole of the horizontal stab and installing it. So it's uh, relatively simple as long as you follow a few basic rules and um, you're good to go. And of course, um, a legitimate question is then, why would I glue these in first, let it cure, and then install it in the airplane? One of the reasons I like doing it this way than doing the whole process at the same time is, for example, if I were to glue this in here, and I'll just put them, pop them in here. So let's just say we just glued them all in there. They're all properly orientated. We did all that, uh, you know, all the right steps. Now, when I go to install this, and as I'm positioning it and trying to get in there, because the glue is incured, I'm always a little concerned that one of them might turn slightly as I'm trying to fit it in the airplane. And if one were to slightly turn, it actually affects the smooth free movement of that particular flight control. If they're glued ahead of time, no matter 
how I manipulate this while installing it in the airplane, they will not turn or reposition in any way. So I've got really good solid control when it's time to install it in the airplane. So that's the reason I like doing it this way. But like I said, uh, it's not uncommon to glue it all on one side and then glue it at the same time into the airplane. So now we're going to install the elevator um, onto the horizontal stab and I've just mixed some 30 minute epoxy. And as I insert the epoxy into the holes, uh, the piano wire I'm using, I actually rotate it as I'm inserting the epoxy. It helps distribute uh, the epoxy in the hole a little bit better. Now that I'm done installing the epoxy into the horizontal stab, I take uh, just a piece of uh, paper towel and alcohol and I wipe off any epoxy that has uh, either run out of the hole or is just anywhere on the exterior surface. Now, of course, you can use uh, other glues. You don't have to use the epoxy. You could use Hysol 9462. It's a long curing one, but uh, Hysol is thicker, so uh, it has less of a tendency to, you know, run out of the hole, whereas uh, the Bob Smith uh, epoxy is um, uh, thinner, so it can ooze out the hole a bit, uh, especially if you let it sit too long. The other type of glue that uh, modelers use is Gorilla Glue, which is uh, actually kind of activated with moisture. So you can sort of wet the horizontal stab holes and then use the Gorilla Glue to put in. And uh, as it cures, it has a tendency to expand and uh, seems to be an effective way to put uh, hinges in as well. So now the elevators uh, have been attached to the horizontal stab and I'm just uh, checking for freedom of movement and that I have the proper spacing between the horizontal stab and elevator and to make sure that uh, nothing is restricting its movement. And uh, so I'm just going to secure everything with some masking tape and let that uh, cure overnight. The masking tape will also help prevent the uh, flight control from possibly uh, changing its position. So in other words, you want to keep everything exactly uh, secure. And the rudder is installed uh, exactly the same way as the elevators. And um, just trial fitting it here to make sure there's uh, no surprises. Everything uh, looks good. And um, then it's uh, simply glued in and secured with tape as well. So we're going to remove the uh, tape. It's cured overnight. Mm. Well, you can see how the elevator just simply drops. That's a good sign. Otherwise, if it stayed like that, that would mean some glue got into the uh, hinge joints. But you can see it just literally falls right down. So we know it's uh, uh, turned out to be a nice installation. And uh, tape off the rudder. Well, that's really free. You can literally just blow onto it and it moves. So it's a literally 100% free movement, which is really nice because that's what you want. There's uh, just that much less strain for the servo. Uh, if there was any binding or anything, or if the hinges were misaligned, like I said earlier in the video that if, um, if any of them, if you go off during installation, like if you do it all at once, uh, and, you know, that would restrict the binding. It wouldn't be unusual then to see it just stay in that position. Uh, but because I pre-install it on the flight control and I let that cure and then install it onto the rest of the uh, airframe, uh, I usually have that kind of success. Okay, so now I just got to uh, remove the tape off the airlines and see how that turned out.
Okay, so now uh, I'm going to remove the tape off the uh, air lawns and uh, see how that turned out. You never really know until you take the tape off. Well, sometimes you got to keep your fingers crossed. I have had it happen where I got some glue in the hinge. And uh, if it does happen, uh, more times than not, you can break it free and then kind of work it loose. Um, of course, the worst situation is if it's actually glued solid, um, then that's quite a problem. Well, so there it is. You can see the airline just drops right down. So that's always a real good sign. We just got one more to go. I can feel already that it's moving. So you lift it up and it just falls down. So, not, uh, no surprises there. We have very nice, very smooth action. And again, like I said before, it just makes it that much easier for the servo. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I'll just mention, these notches in here, uh, of course the whole idea of that is you, you almost virtually eliminate the gap, okay? So it makes for just a little more of a streamlined situation. It's not necessary, um, but uh, I've incorporated in this airplane here. So there's very, very little space in between the airline and the wing, and yet we have all the deflection we want. And, uh, you know, I've never had these Robart hinges, as I mentioned before, fail on me, Matt. But what's interesting, on that Fokker D7, which is a Hangar 9R, um, it came with the, uh, what they call, I guess, CA hinges, just these little solid looking things. And um, I've had it happen where I did a roll and the air line simply broke completely off. And uh, the only thing that it was uh, holding it was the uh, push rod and the air line went into the vertical position and was, you know, fluttering in the back of the wing and actually acting like a rudder. So it made for a little bit of a challenge flying it. Uh, I think we actually have a video clip of that. So I'll see if I can turn that up. And uh, so as a result of that, I went and changed all the hinges to Robart hinges and uh, never had a, a problem since. So anyways, um, that's where we're at. And uh, the next step is uh, I'm going to assemble the airplane and uh, hook up the servos and get that all done. A uh, little, little more sanding. The airplane will get uh, one very last light coat of primer because this is a result of uh, sanding it smooth. And um, then after that, it'll be the base coat. My spray booth is almost finished. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Now, the incident I talked about earlier in the video of the airline breaking off the Hangar 9 uh, Fokker D7, I actually found that video that one of the club members uh, took that day. And I've included the link to the video in the descriptions. So if you have any questions or comments, I always welcome them. If you like the video, please select like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.